Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new video. Now, here is something that you haven't seen on the channel yet. Oh, wrong side. It's a Toshiba Satellite Pro. So let's open it up. Just a bit in view. Now this is an old laptop I got uh, from somebody who wants to uh, throw it away. It features an Intel Pentium processor, the MMX. So yeah, really cool. Windows 95 and nice cursor little thingy with a uh, tracking ball. Nice touchpad. Now if I try to power it up, the battery still works. I mean, if we take a look at that, the battery is down here in this nice little compartment. It's a 3600 milliamp hour battery, 10.8 volts DC, well obviously it's DC, and it still works. It is still almost at exactly that capacity. And that's because the charger that's included with this laptop is so unbelievably slow that the battery just doesn't downgrade. Well, let's actually put the battery back and let's uh, try to fire this thing up, shall we? Now, first we are going to look at the back. Here, are obviously the power port, the charging port, a uh, port for your keyboard or mouse, serial interface. Now, this is some kind of uh, Interconnect or something, a USB, yeah, that's cool, cool, infrared, prayer port, and I think that's a display port. Over here you've got a dial-in uh, telephone line CD, a, well, I think this is a, a, a ZIF, a ZIF thingy, well this almost looks like USB-C, but it's that Kensington lock thing. This is something that I don't know what this is. This is the power button with a protective switch. Really nice. Um, and at the back, or at the bottom, we can, well, if this thing wants, remove the CD drive. And why do we want to remove the CD drive? Well, this laptop was so state-of-the-art that you could swap in a floppy disk. And I do know what that larger port is for at the side. I remember it. It's been a while since I last touched this, uh, this laptop. And what we now can do is we can remove the disk drive and put in the floppy drive. Now it's not a class one laser product anymore. Oh. But now we've got a floppy disk installed. And Toshiba included this thing, which is that little weird large connector that we can see uh, right beneath the power button. This clicks into it and you need to push it and then you can remove it. What's this? Well, this is a adapter or a external drive cage. So you can swap the device that's inside your laptop and you can use a external adapter like this natively to still use your uh, CD or vice versa, your floppy drive, without removing this. So this is really cool technology. It's, it's really amazing. And yeah, this is just cool. And it's portable, so you can also just remove it if you don't need it. And of course, we've got another battery, because yeah, why do we need one battery? We need two. Obviously, a power brick. And this is something that I haven't seen yet. It's a Nokia. Let's find the other end. 
I guess that this is for this is for connecting your phone, so you can upload your contacts or something. And of course, yeah, the, the, the dial-in thingy that uh, plugs into here. Then you can uh, can use the internet. Well, let's put this um, in the charger, or maybe we can see if the other battery is still alive. Well, today I mainly use it to uh, play roller coaster. Oh, something was happening. Oi! There you go. Let me turn off the LED. Move the camera screen a little bit. What does it say? Bad CRT, yeah, check system, then press F11 or F1. And now, well, this is the BIOS. Except without saving, yes, it will test the memory. There it goes. Windows 95. Ah, that's just cool. So, this is a little bit awkward for me, but I obviously need to see the screen. It's Dutch, so let's open uh, this computer. And over here you can see a floppy drive, which is what we expect since we installed the floppy drive. But if you press enter, yeah, device not ready. Now I've got a few uh, floppies that are my birthday presents from a nice YouTuber called RetroMels. Uh, he does all kinds of things with really old laptops he's a, uh, a good friend of mine so i really recommend that you check him out i'll put his channel down below and he gave me this birthday card instead of a real card but this one is from last year i still haven't opened it and this one is from this year and which i also didn't open yet but if we insert it into the drive and Try again. Yeah. Now, that doesn't sound good. So there is something wrong with the floppy drive. Now, I'm not sure what's wrong with the floppy drive, but let's shut down the computer. Yes, shut down. And well, let's take a look at the uh, at the floppy drive, because uh, maybe we can fix it. So obviously, to take a look at the floppy drive, we need to remove it. Now, the floppy drive. Well, it sounds like the uh, floppy disk motor is spinning, but that's, it's just doing nothing. So, it really sounds like some kind of uh, rubber belt that's missing, which is uh, quite common with these uh, floppy drives, that the rubber belt that spins the various components that need to be driven by a motor uh, just disintegrates or snaps or fails. So let's actually open the drive up 
to see if we can find such a belt. Now there are second-hand floppy drives uh, available on the internet. Uh, this is just a adapter for the real floppy drive. Now there are second-hand um, drives available on the internet, uh, but they're rather expensive. So let's first try to identify the problem and see if we can well, fix it on our own before spending uh, money. Now it's funny that the components were so big that they need to make cutouts uh, otherwise it didn't fit on the uh, in the uh, the casing. So well here's your floppy drive and as you are able to see I have already opened it actually there weren't screws. The drive was attached with rivets so I was forced to actually drill them out to be able to open it which is a shame but it's not a shame if you want to repair the, the drive so for those playing along at home this is the drive model number are there any stickers on here no there aren't yeah except for the class 1 laser product well this is not laser based of course it's magnetic field uh, based let's open the drive like so now I do think that the bottom was also able to come out but I'm afraid not well if we enter a floppy disk we can see that that works the floppy disk is opened if we eject it so that works and the motor is over here yeah you can also see the belt it's over here and my guess is that it slips when it's being accessed so this might come in handy because we can use this to power up the drive without it being inside and we can well basically have a look at what the drive is uh, doing whilst being accessed by the uh, laptop so let's open this and take a look at what's happening there we go now that's open and this is basically just a connector let's attach this to the laptop I think you should be able to see the belt oh. device not ready so let's actually insert a floppy and It's very hard to see if the actual belt is spinning or not. I don't think it's spinning. I think it's only well vibrating. Let's put it upside down. And see if this thing rotates. Yeah, that rotates. Can we see the belt? Yes, we can. Well, I think the belt just needs some tension, but I'm not really sure how to do that. I guess it also goes to the middle of the disc. Let's see if we can see the disc rotate. Yeah, it was rotating a little bit. Hmm. 
until it basically slipped. Well, I suggest that we try to take the part without damaging it and have a look. Look, you can see the uh, magnetic drive is not spinning inside the floppy disk. It spins when it ramps up and ramps down. You can see there's a little filthy piece on the disk. Well, there was. And if you look at the right angle, you can't see the disk spinning. So. Let's remove this from the computer. Let's see what we can remove. I really don't want to damage the drive since the laptop is in such a pristine condition. There you go, so that's the front bezel. Oh. And immediately all the internals of the drive, which is not what I was... No. Oh. Well, uh, there's your drive tray. This is the, the, the belt I was talking about. There's a lot of flex in the belt and that is causing the, the problem. Look at this. They cut a hole in the plastic cover for this IC. Wow. Ah, it's a shame. The motor is soldered on the motor's power wires is soldered onto the PCB. But let's just take out the motor. This one doesn't want to go. To hopefully get the job done, because we definitely need to remove it now. Yeah, there you go. Ta-da! Well, at least I think. Yeah, there you go. So. Well, this is... Uh, yeah, this is end of story for that capacitor. But, we now do have access to the belt. And we might be able to find a matching replacement. So let's have a look. A floppy drive. Let's open it and see what's inside it. There's one of that one massive motor. And with that I actually don't think that a rubber band is in this drive. Because everything is directly connected to the motor. No. No rubber band. Ah, that's unfortunate. Well, maybe it's not intended to be used like this. But, hey, we could at least try it. I mean, we've got exactly nothing to lose, so... This might actually work. Uh, let's try to screw it back together then. Be very careful. There we go. Let's put this back in its uh, position. Let's actually boot up the laptop and see what it uh, got to say uh, about this. Uh, that's connected. Let's insert this. Wait for the thing to boot up. Amazing that sound. It's really relaxing that startup sound. And what also amazes me 
is that it tries to open the programs I had open whilst shutting down the laptop. All right, three and a half inch diskette. It's still showing up. Let's insert it and have a look. Will it work? Guys, this is unbelievable. The disc is rotating uh, and the device is not ready. Well, the disc was rotating. It's, wow, oh, this is amazing. Look, point the light at it. Look. It's rotating. This is really amazing. I mean, We've just literally fixed the drive, well, the rubber band with, or the, the rubber belt with a rubber band. This, wow, this is unbelievable. That could very well also be a, a problem. That the, the speed that the thing is spinning at is, well, not fast enough. I do think that I can see the thing being twisted a little. Oh, it spins a lot smoother. But it's still, it's rubbing against itself. And I think that we need to fix that. But already it's, it's running a lot smoother. So let's install this again and see what uh, yeah, actually happens. Here we go. So it's the next day and I found another rubber band which is a little bit smaller and um, yeah when it when you pull it out it obviously thinnens. So I'm hoping that when I will use that rubber band the rubber band won't rub against itself anymore since that's the case with the current rubber band that I use so well, let's take this apart so we can swap the rubber band out let me zoom in a little for you now the rubber band has been uh, behaving really well well except for the part that it was uh, rubbing against itself so let's just remove it and pull the motor a little bit And let's put this one in there. Oh, it fits nice inside the uh, the wheel as well. This is obviously a nice thing. Helps guiding the uh, rubber band. Well, let's actually install the screw. So that the motor won't uh, fly out. I'm hoping that it isn't too thick, because it's thick. Uh, let's use the tool again. Yeah, and again, this needs to be done with a straight band oh 
Oh, this seems to work. Now the only thing concerning me is that there is no too little of an edge holding that rubber band down. So I'm a little bit concerned that when it starts to rotate, it just flies off. Oh, this does rotate a lot smoother than the, uh, than the other rubber band. And for now it stays on there. So let's put the cover back on. Uh, and let's have a look at what the uh, device does. And let's have a look at what the, uh, the thing does. But first, nice welcome tone. That's just cool, man. Let's have a look. Zoom you in a little. Disc A. Here we go. It is rotating, but it says device not ready. Now I know I had twisted this a lot. And I'm actually wondering what that does. But it just says disk not ready. So I think it has got a big time rotating the rubber band. I think it has got issues with that. Because I don't think that it will rotate that slowly. So yeah, let's try to uh, identify this rubber band and try to uh, order a new one. Still going to try the old rubber band to see if there wasn't some kind of other problem that I could have fixed in the meantime. Well, it is detecting some kind of thing because the a new drive belt might actually fix it because it's detecting if there is a drive and it's reading it with the head. So I'm a uh, going to get online and see if I can fix a uh, rubber band with the same uh, dimensions as this uh, has and maybe if we install that uh, it will actually work so I'll keep you updated hey guys this is Tim I hope you liked that video if you want to see more please make sure to subscribe uh, you can also share the video with your friends and hit that like button I'll see you in the next one